And the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men stood in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, and bowed himself to the earth, and said, My Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree, while I fetch a morsel of bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd, and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds, and milk, and the calf which he had prepared, and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah your wife? And he said, She is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you in the spring, and Sarah your wife will have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time, at the appointed time, I will return to you in the spring, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, No, but you did laugh. Then the men set out from there, and they looked toward Sodom, and Abraham went with them to set them on their way. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do, seeing that Abraham shall become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall bless themselves by him? No, for I have chosen him, that he may charge his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord, by doing righteousness and justice, so that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and their sin is very grave, I will go down to see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry which has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, but Abraham, Abraham still stood before the Lord. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you indeed destroy the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then destroy the place and not spare it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be it from you, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Behold, I have taken upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him and said, Suppose forty are found there. He answered, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, Behold, I have taken upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. He answered, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak again, but this once. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. And the Lord went his way, when he had finished speaking to Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. The two angels came to Sodom in the evening. And Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and bowed himself with his face to the earth, and said, My lords, turn aside, I pray you, to your servant's house, and spend the night, and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the street. But he urged them strongly, so they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast, and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, 
Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, so that we may know them. Lot went out of the door to the men, shut the door after him, and said, I beg you, my brothers, do not act so wickedly. Behold, I have two daughters who have not known man. Let me bring them out to you, and do to them as you please. Only do nothing to these men, for they have come under the shelter of my roof. But they said, Stand back. And they said, This fellow came to sojourn, and he would play the judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. Then they pressed hard against the man, Lot, and drew near to break the door. But the men put forth their hands and brought Lot into the house to them, and shut the door. And they struck with blindness the men who were at the door of the house, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves, groping for the door. Then the men said to Lot, Have you anyone else here, son-in-law, sons, daughters, or anyone you have in the city? Bring them out of the place, for we are about to destroy this place, because the outcry against its people has become great before the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and said to his sons-in-law, who were to marry his daughters, Up, get out of this place, for the Lord is about to destroy the city. But he seemed to his sons-in-law to be jesting. When morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. But he lingered. So the men seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand, the Lord being merciful to him. And they brought him forth and set him outside the city. And when they had brought them forth, they said, Flee for your life. Do not look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Flee to the hills, lest you be consumed. And Lot said to them, O oh no, my lords, behold, your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have shown me great kindness in saving my life. But I cannot flee to the hills, lest the disaster overtake me, and I die. Behold, yonder city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Let me escape there. Is it not a little one? And my life will be saved. He said to him, Behold, I grant you this favor also, that I will not overthrow the city of which you have spoken. Make haste, escape there, for I can do nothing till you arrive there. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun had risen on the earth when Lot came to Zoar. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities in all the valley, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. But Lot's wife behind him looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. And he looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah, and toward all the land of the valley, and beheld, and behold, the smoke of the land went up like the smoke of a furnace. So it was that. When God destroyed the cities of the valley, God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. A Shugayan of David, which he sang to the Lord concerning Cush, a Benjamite. O Lord my God, in you I take refuge. Save me from all my pursuers and deliver me, lest like a lion they rend me, dragging me away with none to rescue. O Lord my God, if I have done this, if there is wrong in my hands, if I have repaid my friend with evil, or plundered my enemy without cause, lest the enemy pursue me and overtake me, and let him trample my life to the ground, and lay my soul in the dust. Selah. Arise, O Lord, in your anger. Lift yourself up against the fury of my enemies. Awake, O my God, you have appointed a judgment. Let the assembly of the peoples be gathered about you, and over it, Take your seat on high. The Lord judges the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness, and according to the integrity that is in me. O let the evil of the wicked come to an end, but establish the righteous. You who try the minds and hearts, O righteous God. My shield is with God, who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge, and a God who has indignation every day. If a man does not repent, God will wet his sword. He has bent and strung his bow. He has prepared his deadly weapons, making his arrows fiery shafts. Behold, the wicked man conceives evil and is pregnant with mischief and brings forth lies. He makes a pit, digging it out, and falls into the hole which he has made. His mischief returns upon his own head, 
and on his own skull his violence descends. I will give to the Lord the thanks due his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord the Most High. Beware of practicing your piety before men in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give alms, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And in praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the, as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father also will forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And when you fast, do not look dismal, like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by men, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. At the heart of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapters 5-7, through seven, is Jesus' teaching on spiritual works, namely almsgiving, prayer, and fasting. These works require the virtue of faith. A person does not give away his or her money, alms, spending time in prayer, and give up good things, fasting, without faith and a supernatural motive. And for the person who perseveres in these works, Jesus promises a reward from the Father in heaven. Yes, God rewards deeds done out of charity and love. Of course, to receive a heavenly reward from our Father, our motives must be for the service of God alone, not for human respect and honor. In his teaching on spiritual works, Jesus frames prayer with alms and fasting thereby instructing us that if we want intimacy with this Father, we must frame our lives with generosity to others, alms, and sacrifice of ourselves, fasting, which create the conditions for deep and successful prayer. Without generosity to others and sacrifice of self, we cannot know in depth the Father, whose love gives us his very Son. How might you begin to incorporate fasting and almsgiving into your own life so as to deepen your intimacy with God?